Have you ever found yourself in a project where you have a really good idea? You've maybe got like a really solid drum loop or a really good bass idea and you struggle to break out of the loop. So you've maybe got four or eight bars of a really good idea and it's working and it really is working well and sounding good. But then you're struggling to actually sort of draw it out into a full song and find the inspiration and the creativity to take it off into other places. If this ever has happened to you or is happening right now, it's very, very common. It's sort of like a writer's block for musicians. And in this video, I wanted to show a time where this was happening to me and how I broke out of this loop and actually ended up turning it into something that sounded a little bit more like a song and something that we could actually work with. In this video, I'm gonna be showing this on a very early project version of our song, Nothing To Lose, which is on Miavono and it's available everywhere. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. This is a very early demo project. This is how I left it after one day of working on it. Now, usually when we make a song, Brad will be at the piano and he'll have sort of a lyrical idea or a melodic idea and we'll sort of work a song out first and then we'll head to the DAW and get an idea going. But in this case, Brad was actually away, so I was just experimenting with some synths and some drums. Before I knew it, I had a loop sort of together that I thought was sounding really cool, but I was struggling to actually expand on it and turn it into a full song. So I'm gonna show you sort of the whole breakdown and process behind what happened. So hopefully you can see any pitfalls you could avoid or maybe feel a little bit inspired. So I'm inside the demo project and I'm gonna show the loop that I started out with. Now for anyone who's heard the original song, we actually ended up pitching it down slightly so that it could fit better with the vocals. So this might sound a little bit odd, but this is how the project started. We started with this drum loop. which is sort of like a backbone of really simple drums. A bit of processing on those and then a drum loop that was sort of faded in to give it a bit more character. I made this drum loop because I wanted something really solid to just practice some synthesizer work on. So I was working with this synthesizer here. It's called a uh, Mini Moog from Archuria. It's a very famous synthesizer actually. And I was experimenting with some different tones. And eventually I settled across this bass tone that I really, really liked. So without the processing, it sounds a bit like this. Just sort of a really solid bass sound and I sort of reverbed it, gave it a bit of an ambience. And I was experimenting with the cutoff filter just here. And before I knew it, I had settled into this loop here. I knew that this was getting somewhere and that it had potential, but I spent maybe a good 20, 30 minutes just kind of looping around in that mode, not really getting anywhere. So I decided to start uh, playing some ideas with the bass and the first breakthrough happened when I was just playing along and instead of finishing by playing I added this switch up at the end that went so when you hear that, it sounds a lot more like it's taking you into a new section. So instead of doing the very simple resolving bass pattern, it was just a little bit more exciting. So I'll play that along. That's version one. tiny little difference at the end of the pattern, it just felt like the song had to go somewhere new. So the first thing to try would be experimenting with patterns. So if you have a pattern that you really like, for instance, the first half of this one, this bass pattern, don't be afraid to just copy a new one, make it unique, and just experiment with sorts of different endings, different transitional chords and stuff like that. Because before you know it, you might just hit a wrong note and it might just really inspire you. Like in that case, I wasn't doing anything calculated. I just played an octave higher and sort of my finger slipped and I, I, I hit a note in a rhythm that I really liked and it inspired me to move on to the next section of the song. At this point, our four bars had actually extended now to eight and I had the drum loops 
and I had this bass going around here. And I played, I played it a bit safe and I decided to add a sub bass. So I was just playing along the lowest notes and just giving the track a little bit of substance and seeing whether that would inspire anything. And what it actually did was inspired me to use a, a really sort of dark and mysterious pad sound. So the pad sounds a little bit like this on its own. And I did experiment with quite a few different pad sounds and eventually the final one was refined. Me and Brad listened to it and he helped me pick the, the right sort of notes for it and really make it shine in the right way. But that pad sort of added a bit of a, a sad sort of mysterious atmosphere to the song. I realized that I didn't have anything leading the song. At this point I had the pad, the sub bass. The pad sounds a little bit atonal, but I had the pad and the sub bass and everything playing like this. So we've extended it to eight bars now, but we're still at this point, I was still completely stuck in this loop and I decided it was time for a lead element. So I wanted to make sure that there was room left for vocals, um, if ever it did have vocals. When I was making it, I wasn't thinking ahead to the vocals, I was kind of just leaving that for Brad to figure out. But I had this lead sound from another song. I didn't want to just start playing lots of arpeggios and lots of complicated stuff. So I opened up a piano and I remembered back to a, a film score that I was that I listened to years and years ago. I think it was by Clint Mansell and it's a, a, a score for a film called Moon. It's actually an amazing soundtrack and I'll leave a link to it in the description. I, I was remembering it in my head and feeling a bit inspired because the main melody of this piece uh, only fluctuates between two or three notes, I think. It's an octave and then one more note, and it sounds a little bit like this. And it just keeps doing that. But with everything else built around it, the simplicity of that melody was just almost haunting. And honestly, the, the actual music will almost make you cry if you listen to it with the, um, with the film. So I was sort of feeling inspired by that, the sort of keep it simple, stupid attitude and I just wanted two notes. So I was on the lead instrument. So I had to pick two notes in the scale, which was a, a C and an F in this case. And playing along with that sort of uh, theme, it would have been very, very quick. It would have been... Which is like very, very, very quick for, for a verse or an intro. So I slowed it down. that felt really, really right. I felt that it had enough room for a vocal in the future, but it was sort of just haunting enough on its own. And then the sort of biggest breakthrough in the track happened. And this is what really took it from a loop into a song, in my opinion. And this is not even an element that's very loud in the final track, but it's this cello here. So I wanted something in the second half of the loop that sort of picked the pace up and started sort of really moving the track. And originally I tried a guitar, may maybe something that was sort of going dum 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 like that on a guitar, but it was sounding too blippy and too like pop music. So I swapped it out for a cello. Uh, inside analog strings and it was just a cello that was playing a really simple arpeggio. So I just had two notes and it would just do the rest for me and it sounded like this. And with that cello added it really sounded like the track was going somewhere and because the cello was added I felt inspired to use a, an entire string section. When you hear this building up you just feel like there's one cellist in the room just sort of playing to lead in almost like an entire orchestra. And it doesn't end up becoming an entire orchestra, it's just a, a string section. But the idea to use something like a cello instead of using the guitar, which would have been the safe option, inspired the string section. And if I had used the guitar, the string section may have been swapped out for some sort of super saw or, or something more pop or more synthy. But what ended up happening was that in the second half of the loop here, with that little switch up at the end, with the cellos being added in, it's just calling 
for this string section in my opinion, and it sounded like this. And at that point, I felt that the loop had broken free into a song. I knew at this point that it was enough of an idea to show to Brad and that he could listen to it and internalize the emotion of the song that I was trying to capture. And that's pretty much what ended up happening. Yeah, he came back, uh, he, he listened to it with me, he understood the emotion. And before I knew it, in a, in a day or two, he had a full song of lyrics. And then we just started uh, reorganizing this project, uh, pitching it down and sort of sorting it out so that it went intro, verse, pre-chorus, bridge, chorus, you know, the, the correct sort of structure because I, I didn't really structure it very well. I was just, you know, like I said, I was just trying to break out of that loop. And another thing that helped it break out of that loop was a little bit of automation. So there was some automation on the cutoff of the bass, which I was explaining earlier. When you automate things like that, it gives it some movement and it's sort of trying to push to a new place. The same with the cello and with the strings, uh, they rise and fall. And when something's, you know, rising at the end of a bar, it, it's definitely trying to go somewhere new. It's not trying to just resolve itself. It's trying to push out into a new area. Obviously, at this point, the, the loop and the ideas still have a lot of polishing to happen. There was still many, many hours and many sessions before this was actually going to be a finished song. But this was the point where I knew that the cool little loop idea at the start, which was nothing more than this, had broken free into uh, its own song. So just to summarize a few of the things we talked about, the first would be try and actually play your song. So I, I usually stick to MIDI. I try to break free and actually learn how to play the piece on, on the keys here. Because if you know what notes you can use, you can start trying new ideas, trying new endings. And it was that ending that sort of helped it break out of the loop so that the bass line didn't just do the repetitive four notes all the time. The next thing would have been to experiment with automation, because without this cutoff filter moving, this bass is very boring. It's not going to break free into a new section of the song if it stays the same. The next thing to try is to try a few things that play it safe, things like adding a sub bass that's just playing the root notes, or adding an atmosphere to try and give the song an energy. Even if you remove them later, it's just a safe bet. You can just do it almost without thinking, and your brain might be inspired to do something new in the meantime. Then trying to sort out a, a melody. Now the melody might be the driving force of the song, or it might just be something repetitive uh, that is very, very easy to follow. In this case, it's just supposed to be very easy to follow, to take you through the song and then the next thing was to add that sort of high tempo energy uh, in this case it was with the cello it might have been with a guitar or something else and then the final thing was to listen to where these elements wanted to go and in this case when when I heard this progression and when I heard the final notes on the cello my brain told me that it needed a string section and your brain might tell you something else your brain might say right it's time to collapse it all and go into like a really sort of uh, uh, anti-drop sort of situation or your brain might take you somewhere completely differently but listen to your instincts and uh, and try to keep fighting through it don't give up too soon but don't spend 10 hours on a loop if it's not working sometimes you can get stuck in a rut and it's difficult to know whether you should just take a step back and leave or whether it's time to really sort of knuckle down and uh, and work until the idea uh, comes to life and you'll find out for yourself which sort of method works well for you. So hopefully this tutorial has helped you and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.